So we'll go forward from here, but this is regarding, uh, this is for our public that watches on t television. We are going to be going forward with a referendum on April the 23rd and wanted to make a, be a brief presentation. I know we have a lot of principals and APs that are out there. And so uh, we just want to, uh, to share what we're doing and why we're doing it. The first slide there talks about this is really about our students, our children, our teachers, our safety, and our future. Tonight we're going to be uh, recognizing our graduation rates and, and recogni recognizing our high schools in that area. But as everyone's aware, we have no failing schools in St. Lucie County. Uh, we're in the top 10 in graduation rate. I'll also share about that every group of students, Hispanics, African Americans, uh, exceptionalities that were all in the top 10. 66% of our schools are A and B schools, and each one of our schools have their own success stories to tell, and that's really um, why we're going to the voters, because we cannot afford to lose any of our good instructors to surrounding counties or outside of the state as well. We also have our career and technical academies that we've been expanding, and uh, almost 2,400 industry certifications where to prepare students to go right into the world of work. The ballot language itself, uh, is up on the screen right now, and this really talks about where the dollars would go for the salaries of teachers and uh, support staff, recruit and retain highly qualified teachers, improve school security, improve mental health services, and uh, at the very end, the funds would be reviewed by a, an independent citizens advisory committee. On the screen now, list really what Martin County and Palm Beach County recently um, passed. 20 school districts in the last year went to the voters for some type of a referendum. In the area of operations, which is with salaries, Martin, Palm Beach County, Broward County, Miami-Dade County, Monroe County, and, and about uh, seven others went to talk about teacher salaries. This is what will happen in Martin and Palm Beach County. With years of experience, you can see anywhere from $1,800 to $1,000 more a year. Six to nine would be $5,000, and 10 plus would be around $8,000 to $10,000. And we're not in a position to compete with that, and so we really need to go to our voters because um, it's a highly competitive field, and the benefits to the students are really what we're all about and our effect on children, but we've got to have high-quality teachers in front of our students. Those are the beginning salaries as well, and we can see that we trail along uh, the, uh, on the Treasure Coast as well with Palm Beach County, and we want to put a dent in that. Where would the dollars go? 70% would be for the increased teacher pay, 25% on school security. I'll talk about that in just a moment. 4% on mental health services and 1% to preserve and fund important programs. The recruitment and the retaining of high quality teachers, high performing students need high performing teachers. And when one of our teachers walks out the door that we've trained, that's an economic impact of around $10,000 to $15,000 for the recruitment we've done, for the training, uh, certifications, those kinds of things. But more important than that is the impact that we would have on our student body uh, when a teacher leaves that classroom. Talk to the principals, they hate to get that phone call sometimes in June, sometimes in July, where a superstar teacher, a high performing teacher is leaving us, and how difficult that is to fill the position, whether it happens in the summer or whether it would happen this spring. But the impact of the students uh, is so important, and uh, we can't measure that. So we really want to keep our folks right here in front of our boys and girls and young people. With security, this is important. We want to have a a, just as we have right now, a school resource officer on every campus. Sheriff Mascara stepped up after par a year ago, almost today, um, with the Parkland massacre, uh, massacre and put officers in the elementary schools where we didn't have them before and some other facilities. And that expense, the county um, has been really putting in um, a lot of dollars into that program. And when this expanded, we received about $1.2 million from the state this year in funding for that. We contributed another, almost another million dollars. That was about uh, two million dollars that went towards that, but there was still a shortfall of around five million dollars in this area, and the county commission stepped up and took on that for really for the one year, and we've had really have to come up with some other alternatives. But it's important, and I know it's important to this board that we do not want any of our employees armed. We don't want armed, we don't want our teachers armed, we don't want our employees armed. We want to have a school resource officer that's trained on our campuses to protect our students. They also develop great relationships with the students and um, it's just a fantastic partnership. Improved mental health, this board is aware of the um, issues and the mental health issues and the uh, social emotional issues that the boys and girls bring to us. Our youngest children, not just, it's not just in the secondary schools, it's with our youngest um, boys and girls. 
and our teachers are not equipped to do this. I say the first and best teachers should be the parents. That's not always the case for all of our children. And we kind of step into that gap and not only teach them the academics, but uh, teach what we call the total child. So if we're successful with this, we can get some more additional counselors, psychologists, social workers, behavioral support staff, those to work with the needs of our young folks. And then preserve important programs. This is a minor, um, there would be 1% put here, but this would be for any, any areas in the district that we think, let's say I see Port St. Lucie High School here tonight, uh, let's say we needed an additional carpentry teacher there because of the expansion of that program. We're gonna be hearing in just a moment from uh, the students at Westgate. Let's say we have a great music program at one of the schools and we need an additional music teacher. Or we need an additional this or that in whatever school center, this would give us that opportunity. Every dollar stays right here in St. Lucie County. The accountability is written in the ballot language where there would be a citizen's advisory committee that would review all expenditures. State law dictates, dictates that we can only spend the money for the intended purposes. Um, our board members are directly accountable to the voters when they're up for re-election. And then this would be for four years and voter approval would be required for any type of a renewal. This will be unique that it will be a mail-in election only, which really gives us the widest opportunity for the public to have a voice in funding our, our schools. If um, for special elections, which this would be, you always have a very, very low turnout in around the 10% range. We wanna make sure that we have as the, the, uh, the most participation that we could have from our community and from our registered voters to have a say in the, in the future of our public schools. Uh, since it is a mail-in ballot, the ballots will go out on April 3rd. We will be doing extensive campaigning as far as getting information out to our public, not only to be registered to vote, but as well as to answer questions. We plan on doing at least four of our town hall meetings. We're looking right now at the beginning of March for that, to be at Lincoln Park Academy, to be at Central, to be at Centennial, and to be at Port St. Lucie High School. Some of those principals are hearing that for the first time right now, but I'm sure they'll accommodate us. So I appreciate the board giving me the opportunity here before the, uh, the uh, young kids come up here, but this is really about our children, our teachers, our safety, and the future of our district, and I appreciate the board allowing me to just take a couple of moments here uh, to present this, and again, we look forward to going out into the community, answering questions, educating our community about this need to have high quality teachers in front of our boys and girls and our young people, have safe schools, mental health services, and preserve important programs. And this will all be seen, overseen by an independent uh, group, outside group of citizens that'll make sure that every penny goes to where we say it will go.